Don't forget to bring the mask. What was that, Masky? Wow, thanks for that public service announcement reminder. Don't forget to mask up in public places. You could help save a life. Hi there, Coach Sage Candy of SageRunning.com here with another training talk. Today we're going to talk about energy systems in running, specifically lactate uh, buffering, lactic acid buffering, as well as kind of what happens in your body while you start running at different intensities over different distances. And the second part of this talk will be on real life application of that information, the why. Why do we do these certain training workouts to cause changes uh, within our body? Uh, it's not just about gaining speed and, and muscle power. There's actually things going on under our skin, inside, at the cellular level. So let's start off with this example. Think of yourself on a 400 meter track. You're on a track, you want to sprint all out, 100% all out sprint for maybe 50 meters. For most people, it's probably going to take at least four seconds, maybe five to eight seconds, we'll say, right? You could do that sprint, one sprint, all out, 100% effort. Um, and the first thing that happens is the body has some energy all ready to go for that explosive sprint. Uh, residual ATP is the first thing that goes. And then, you know, creatine phosphate stores, CP stores start kicking in. Uh, but you're not breathing very hard. It's it's a uh, alactic system, technically, is what they call it in technical terms. And you could do one of these sprints okay. You might be, you know, it's, it's an intense effort, 100% all out, strains you neuromuscularly. And it's a lot like, you know, lifting a heavy weight all at once, right? So that energy is blown though. That's the problem is that energy is blown. So if you had to do 20 of these sprints with a short rest in between, like a, you know, a 30 second rest, you start getting tired pretty fast. You'd start to be breathing pretty hard and your heart rate would start spiking and you would go what we call anaerobic, uh, get in oxygen debt. And we're gonna get into this in a second. So then that would call on other energy systems and your heart rate skyrocketing, you're breathing very hard, you're over your threshold, so to speak, because uh, you ran out of those, those energy, the quick energy you had initially. Now, as distance runners, and most of this talk is gonna be about distance running, uh, we'll start extending the distance. Let's say you were fresh and you started sprinting around the track all out, not pacing yourself, pretty much flat out sprint, uh, you know, trained people, maybe if, if you're not trained, you, you get tired before 200 meters, but most distance runners who are pretty well trained and in decent shape, you're going to be able to breeze probably through half a lap, 200 meters, pretty well, sprinting all out, right? The problem is when you get to about 250 meters, maybe 300 meters, uh, for you really fast whippersnappers, maybe that's 40 seconds. I definitely could not get to 300 meters in 40 seconds, but you get around 35, 40 seconds or three, 250, 300 meters around the track, sprinting really hard, and what happens? The bear jumps on your back. That's like a saying we used to have, the bear's lurking on the curve and he, he jumps on your back because all of a sudden you start tying up uh, and you're locking up with lactic acid buildup, lactate buildup, uh, because you're going anaerobic. You're going anaerobic, you're over your lactate tolerance, basically, uh, and you've, you've reached an oxygen debt. You've been breathing really hard, your heart rate's getting up there. Your heart, now notice your heart rate's not quite getting up to 100% because it doesn't have time to, but your body's getting flooded with lactate because it's overwhelmed, it's overwhelmed. You're not pacing yourself. If you want to sprint to your best 400 meters, your best single lap, you can't go 100% from the gun maybe 98% or you know, you gotta pace it a little bit because the bear jumps on your back. So you get to 300 meters in and all of a sudden you're tying up, you're slowing down and it hurts, it burns, it burns. It's a lactic acid uh, making your blood more acidic and, and then causing your muscles to turn into concrete basically. And that's the saying with the bear jumping on your back is you're limited by that factor. And in races from 400 meters up to you know the 1500 meters the mile the 5k even the 10k or if, if you're really elite running a half marathon close to 60 minutes that's kind of the limiting factor of things is that lactate buildup and that anaerobic so to speak 
without oxygen. We'll get into the details here. Uh, co energy contribution is shutting things down. And, you know, there's a lot of speculation with what exactly causes the muscle contracts and contractions to shut down your muscle power. Uh, it's not just the fact that there's a lot of lactate uh, or that it's it's more that it's lactic acid and it's changing the pH of your blood which could cause disruption with your muscle contractions and there's other things though with like potassium and, and uh, I'll, I'm not going to get into it that deep but um, that's the idea and I urge you to go on our website sagering.com we have a free uh, download a free pace intensity spectrum track download where we talk about you know different heart rate zones and different intensities and how it correlates kind of with different paces on a flat surface, be it if you're doing these 200 or 400 meter repeats at faster than 5K race pace, or you're doing a long run that's more like marathon race pace, which we'd say is, you know, 98 to 99% all aerobic. Aerobic meaning with oxygen, we're working the aerobic system. And that's kind of the, the crux of this talk really is that distance runners, we're almost always working mainly the aerobic system. There's very little anaerobic contribution. You're not a sprinter. If you focused on the 800 meters or shorter, we would say, okay, that's there's a significant uh, anaerobic contribution there of energy. And what we're talking about is doing really high intensity stuff with short rests that's going to build up those lactate clearance levels. Now lactate, if you think of like milk, this is actually soy milk, so it's not really it doesn't really count here. Lactate, lactose, this doesn't have lactose in it, but mammal's milk, lactate, right? The creamy white liquid, it's the white stuff. Um, that's that's uh, kind of what we're talking about. And the thing is, when you're sprinting really hard over your threshold, so to speak, we could call it the lactate threshold, the anaerobic threshold, uh, you go into oxygen debt, and the byproduct of this anaerobic glycolysis, the, the cycle of energy we're talking about, is that there is a <laughs> lactic acid forms, right? It, a positively charged hydrogen ion attaches to the lactate and makes it lactic acid, which is the acidic thing, and it drops our, our blood pH, makes it feel, makes it burn, basically, in layman's terms. You're burning. It's very painful. It's very painful. Running all out 800 meters, two laps around the track, yeah, you have to pace yourself, but the bear's going to jump on your back at some point, probably. <laughs> and it's going to hurt a lot. And you're going to be straining, and you're going to be breathing really hard at 100% maximum heart rate. By an 800 meters, you're talking about spiking that heart rate finally. But usually the heart rate doesn't have time to get up in a 100 meter sprint only. So that's kind of the difference there. And we could train the body to develop more buffering, so to speak, to this lactic acid. Uh, by getting more fit, by doing specific workouts, the body kind of naturally adjusts and says, hey, I don't like this lactic acid stuff. I don't like too high levels of lactate circulating in my blood, right? The milky stuff. Uh, I want to clear some of that quickly and I could even utilize, I could even utilize some of that lactate as fuel. And this is more applicable to like 10K to half marathon where we're kind of riding that thin line between our tempo run pace or our lactate threshold and circulating this lactate around in our blood at different levels and trying to utilize some of it even as energy. There's a good study by Brooks, a lot of research done by this guy named Brooks uh, about the lactate shuttles, but we're not, that's, not, that's outside of this training talk scope. We're not gonna get too scientific and complicated here. I did look into some of the energy contributions uh, and, and we brushed up on some of that, but back to the buffering, the buffering, what what buffers lemon juice, right? Something acidic, what, what you know, so oh, baking soda sodium bicarbonate essentially naturally forming in your body sodium bicarbonate could help buffer some of this acidic this burning lactic acid uh, and neutralize it it neutralizes it so it makes it more tolerable so to speak instead of instantly locking up you could maybe sprint through 600 meters and get pretty far before you really lock up because your body's saying hey we, we need to control this this acidic blood drop in pH, right? We have natural sodium bicarbonate working in our body, natural buffers. Now, there's also these things called the mitochondria. If you remember from biology class, that's the powerhouse of the cell. Those are very important in all of this. But there's even been studies where people have been taking baking soda uh, before their race, be it a 1500 meters or 800 meters or even a 5K or 10K. And there's been shown to be some benefit. The problem is it's a double-edged sword. Sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, if 
you know, this fizzes, right? And uh, it could cause some bad stomach, stomach distress, right? Some GI distress. It could give you a really bad stomach ache, a side stitch, uh, maybe diarrhea. I don't know. It's a little risky. So do you want to help your natural sodium bicarbonate levels with taking in extra, extra uh, baking soda? Consult your doctor before trying anything new. I'm not liable if you get sick or die. Uh, I wouldn't do it. Too much of a risk for the stomach. But again, we compete in longer distance races, or some of us do, where marathon and ultra, it's basically 100% aerobic. So there really is no lactic acid buildup. People say, oh, you know, I was doing this ultra and I was running up the hill and, you know, I felt tired and I was all the lactic acid. Nah, it probably wasn't. Like, you could do a hill sprint during an ultra and theoretically get some lactic acid, but it would be a really bad idea. It's a poor pacing strategy. Uh, you could feel muscle fatigue, though, and you could definitely be breathing hard if you're trying to eat food especially, uh, and if you're running low on glycogen or you're dehydrated, that all manifests itself in muscle shutdown, which is a similar pain and a similar type of feeling. So, uh, you know, for the longer distance races, we say, okay, train the aerobic system. It's all aerobic. What are the limiting factors in a marathon or ultra? It's usually the fueling, the hydration, the glycogen, the, you know, how many carbs you're eating, and then sheer muscle fatigue, right? Sheer muscle pounding, quads pounding on the downhill, lack of power, being able to climb uphill, uh, usually a combination of all those things. Whereas in the shorter distance races, under 60 minutes, for most people that's not even a half marathon, that's more like a 15K or 10K, uh, and below, then you're talking about, okay, I'm building up a lot of lactic, lactic acid and my muscles are shutting down and I feel this burning sensation, the bear jumping on my back, and I'm also hitting my heart rate up to 95 or even 100% uh, and that's being strained 100% all out. Now there could be muscle failure there too, there could be cramps, right, booty lock, cramped hamstring, things like that. But usually if we're looking at the blood levels, the blood pH, how much lactate we have, uh, you know, we're spiking that in these shorter distance races. We're going anaerobic or crossing the threshold, so to speak. Now, what does this all mean? Why is this important? To end this training talk, we'll say it's important because it shows why you should have a variety of workouts in your training, in a training cycle. You need the speed workouts and the high intensity stuff, uh, especially if you're racing 5K and 10K or below, because you need to be able to buffer some of that feelings of the lactic acid. You need to be able to do some fast intervals like 400 meter repeats, eight times 400, close to 3K pace or faster with a short rest because not only do you wanna train your legs to move that fast and get a long stride length and stimulate your fast twitch muscle fibers, but you also need to train your blood pH and your, your natural buffering to get rid of that lactate, those high lactate, lactate clearance types of workouts are what these are called. And to get used kind of psychologically, to get used to that pain and intensity of that burning sensation that you will experience. And at the same time, this spikes your heart rate also up to VO2 max or about 100%. So you're getting used to that heart going really fast, beating really hard, pumping that blood very fast. All that stuff triggers uh, the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell again, to generate more and to be larger as mitochondria, they just become more efficient basically with all these biological processes. So that's why there's value in doing short high intensity workouts. And this goes up even for marathon runners, doing hill sprints. Why do I do 10 times 10 second hill sprints? Well, it's to do muscle power. It's not so much to clear the lactate, but it teaches good form, it's a good power type of thing. It does work the lactic system and that's why I take a full rest between hill sprints because I want to reset my creatine phosphate stores. I don't want it to be an anaerobic workout. If I was an 800 meter runner, maybe at some point near my peak in the season, I'd want it to be anaerobic and I'd take a very short controlled rest and really put myself in a lot of pain because I need to spike that, that lactic acid tolerance, right? And so, you know, we look at doing a lot of aerobic work throughout most of the year, throughout most of a training cycle and not over racing because we want to slowly develop these systems like the lactate threshold by doing controlled tempo runs at 80 to 85% maximum heart rate to work mainly on the aerobic system, but to kind of just scrape up against that little bit of anaerobic contribution or, you know, a little bit working on 
how much lactate you're accumulating in your bloodstream while you're running at these different intensities. And again, that's the golden rule with lactate threshold training, especially for longer distance runners, is that you do things like tempo runs or up-tempo runs or fartlek surges during long runs because you want to create uh, a little bit higher levels of lactate, but also teach your body to start clearing it at faster rates so you could be more efficient. You could hold it off more. It's going to help you uh, just run more efficiently, basically, in layman's terms. The bear's not going to jump on your back. Uh, and, you know, if you could do that, you're also probably burning better, getting better at fat burning, uh, natural stores of fat on your body, as well as glycogen sparing, so to speak. So you're burning glycogen, you're burning fat, you're burning carbs and fat, right? You want to be burning both at the same time, ideally, uh, in a long distance race so you don't totally fizz out. You have a constant flow of energy and things are just more smooth. Hopefully your pacing's more smooth and efficient so you could run your best performance as possible in these long distance races. So that's why it's important to do the tempo runs, the threshold stuff, and to be careful with spiking too much high intensity all at once. It's also an injury risk, obviously, with the skeletal muscular system, getting a stress fracture, muscle strain, exhausting your muscle fibers. So that's my long-winded scientific talk on here again. Thanks so much for subscribing on here. Check out our playlist of running form tutorials. We've got training plans for any service, any distance at stagerunning.com. It helps Coach Sandy and I out a lot. We develop these plans together. And uh, yeah, check out thumbs up if you like this. Thanks to the Patreon supporters and title sponsors sponsor Hoka One One, keeping the dream alive. Hope you're doing well. Stay tuned for more. Wanna get high? Masky, the only place I'm getting high is on the top of mountains and getting high on life. Feed me.